Hey, you. Yeah, you. Listen to me. Are you in the market for a private island? Ah, oh, come on. We all need our own personal getaway. Plus, these prices are unbeatable. Okay, fine, I make a lousy salesperson. But there really are whole islands out there that you can purchase for a fraction of the typical price. But the real kicker is that nobody wants to buy them. Take, for example, Piaça Busu Islands, Brazil. Price, $79,500. For just under $80,000, you can become the owner of not one, but six islands situated on Brazil's São Francisco River. These islands can boast picturesque views, exciting wildlife, and even colonial ruins. So why hasn't anybody grabbed them up yet? Well, the reason might lie in the fact that you're technically just buying the right to use the islands for 99 years. Besides, the contract contains a vague note that you'll be subject to small annual taxes. Hmm, yeah, maybe pass on this sketchy deal. But I've got plenty more offers, like Little Rocky Island, Nova Scotia, Canada. Price, $74,500. Surprisingly, this 8-acre island is still available, and if you hurry, you'll be able to buy it. For seventy five dollars that is. But given its pretty sandy beaches, untouched nature, and pine trees, that price point is a steal. Although Little Rocky Island lies in the Atlantic Ocean, neighboring islands protect it from foul weather. There's no property on the island, but you can build anything you like there. As for why it's still for sale, that's a real mystery. Perhaps the market is a little flooded, since Canada has so many private islands for sale. Tillamook Island, Oregon, USA Price – $50,000 Also known as Terrible Tilly, this island's nickname speaks for itself. Well, it's not technically an island in the traditional sense. It's basically a rock with a single lighthouse on it off the coast of Oregon. Initially, the island was sold for a half a million, but that wasn't the only time it was for sale. So far, nobody has been enthusiastic enough to buy the place. Why, you ask? Well, when you consider the tumultuous weather, waves that can get so high they sweep over the entire island, and a history that's not short of tragedy for those who brave the dangerous waters around it, then yeah, Tilly doesn't exactly sell like hotcakes. Chandler Island, Maine, USA. Price $39,999. So if you have some extra cash, you can buy a one-acre island with a view of picturesque Maine. There's a little cabin on the island, and you can theoretically build some other property there too if you want. The only problem is that, you know, during high tide, half of the island gets submerged underwater. As a result, the tiny territory of the island shrinks even more. Bring a life vest. Fort Carroll, Maryland, USA. Price $31,500. You could be the owner of a historic private island on one condition. You have to restore the fort situated on it. But it'd cost you less than the average price of a college tuition. Fort Carroll is an artificial island constructed in 1848. What's left today is an abandoned hexagonal fort on the island that was once crucial for defending the city of Baltimore. Many local businesses have made attempts to renovate the fort and even turn it into a hotel, a casino, a conference center, and even a jail. However, nobody has succeeded so far. The problem with the island is that it's an important bird conservation site that's home to tons of herons and seagulls. That's why you can't construct or change anything on the island, since it might spook the birds. Secondly, the fortress itself is under the protection of the state's strict environmental laws. This makes redevelopment next to impossible. McGibbon Island, New Brunswick, Canada. Price – $29,900 in Canadian. People typically associate private islands with some sort of tropical paradise. But Canada's McGibbon Island is nothing like that. Perhaps that explains the super low price tag of 30 grand for this small plot of land on the St. John's River. But it's probably got more to do with the fact that McGibbon is completely undeveloped. One of the reasons for this inconvenience is that every spring, the territory gets totally submerged. So you can't really build a cozy house here because it'd float away with the floodwaters. But if you like camping trips, McGibbon Island might be a spectacular investment. Matsuiker Island, Australia. 
Price? Free. See that little string there? Yeah, it's attached. Welcome to a tiny island off the coast of Tasmania, Australia. To be the only occupant of this island, you don't need to buy it or pay rent. The Tasmanian Parks and Wildlife Services offer people to live in this remote, beautiful location entirely free of charge. The duration of stay is a half a year. But that should be plenty of time to enjoy all the lush greenery, breathtaking ocean views, and your own personal vegetable garden. As always, there's a catch. First of all, this offer is open only for couples, and both partners should be equally eager to go to the island. Besides, you'll take care of the property and its wildlife, as well as maintain the equipment and buildings. Your responsibilities will also include weather observations. And finally, there's no means of communication with the rest of the world. That's right, no TV, no internet, no cell phone service. Harsh. Once you're there, you can only leave the island for emergencies. And finally, finally, you can only bring up to 716 pounds of supplies with you when you arrive. Yeah, pretty strict stuff, huh? But hey, if you and your spouse are looking to escape from the modern world for a few months, then I say, go for it. Okay, maybe you don't have tens of thousands of dollars to buy even the cheapest islands on the market that nobody else wants. Well, there are plenty of other islands that aren't really for sale, but you can live there, or at least visit some of them. Again, for one reason or another, nobody wants to. For example, there's Okunashima Island. This place lies approximately 2 miles off the coast of Japan, but despite such a convenient location, nobody lives there. From 1929 to 1945, there was a chemical weapons plant on the island that produced poisonous gas. Yet even after the factory ceased to exist, no one wanted to settle on the island. In 1988, the Okunashima Poison Gas Museum was opened and it started to attract tourists. Would you get a free sniff? But that wasn't the main reason why the island started gaining more and more visitors. It was because the place is overcome by rabbits. They began to thrive and multiply on the island after the factory was closed. And these days, thousands of friendly bunnies will greet you if you decide to pay them a visit. And if you do, you should find time to stop in at Hashima Island. Dubbed Battleship Island because it looks like an old, half-destroyed battleship, Hashima is located about 9 miles away from Nagasaki. From 1887 to 1974, there was a profitable coal mine on the island. More than 5,000 miners together with their families lived on this 15-acre piece of land, all of them cooped up in high-rise tenements. But when the coal ran out, people left the island, and the buildings were abandoned. Over time, they slowly crumbled away to the point that it was dangerous to even step foot on the island. Nowadays, the site is open for tourists, but it's no wonder nobody is eager to live in this gloomy place. Lazaretto Nuovo Located in Venice, Italy, this island is also open for tourists, but home to nobody. The reason lies in its rough past. In 1468, the island became a quarantine area for ships that approached the city. This move was meant to protect Venice from the plague. In the 18th century, the island was turned into a military base. And finally, in 1975, the place was left alone, derelict and forgotten. Only recently has the local community turned it into a museum site. Jacko Island This place belongs to the Democratic Republic of Timor-Leste. The island looks like the picture of a true paradise. Lush green trees, crystal blue waters, and white sand. Surprisingly, this place is uninhabitable. But that's because the island is sacred to locals, so no one is allowed to live there permanently. But they don't mind one-day tourist trips or even camping, so you can visit it. So, which island would you like to go to? Let everybody know down in the comments. For me, it's gotta be Rabbit Island. The place must go nuts at Easter time. Also, remember to give this video a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hit the subscribe button to stay on the bright side of life.